In this demo, we will have a look at the user interface of the Cronus Cyber Protect Cloud from the viewpoint of the managed service provider. So let's get started. Once you logged in to the management console, you can see the list of all the tenants related to the current service provider. Within the Acrona Cyber Protect Cloud, there are three types of tenants. That is, customer tenant, partner tenant, and folder tenant. Customers are businesses who sign direct contracts with the service provider and get specific services from it. Partners are second level business partners that a large managed service provider can have. Those second level business partners can have their own customers. Finally, folders are used to group similar entities according to some predefined criteria. For example, you can group customers according to geographical areas, industry, size, or service usage mode. Navigate to the section Overview and then Operations. Here you will see a dashboard presenting the current cyber protection status of your tenants. The information is stratified according to some predefined topics and displayed in widgets. You can customize the available widgets, rearrange them within the dashboard, and add new widgets by pressing the Add Widget button. Navigate to the section Overview and then Usage. You could switch between the tabs to see the usage for each service. The list of available services include, but are not limited to, Acronis Cyber Protection, Acronis Cyber Disaster Recovery Cloud, Acronis Cyber Files Cloud, Acronis Cyber Notary Cloud, Physical Data Shipping, and so on. In the case of Cyber Protection Service, the overview page presents the following information. Company name, tenant status, abridged seven-day cyber protection history, total cloud storage size, partner-owned backup storage, and the local backup storage. By clicking on a tenant, you can get more information about the services enabled for it. As an option, you can go to the tenant level and manage all the services enabled to the corresponding tenant at a fine-grained level. In order to go to the tenant level, press the three-dot button next to the tenant's name and select Go To. You can create a new customer, business partner, or folder by pressing the New button in the upper right-hand corner and selecting the corresponding option. The process of creating these entities is very intuitive. You can enable or disable any tenant by clicking on the three-dot menu next to its name and selecting the corresponding option. If you disable a tenant, the provisioning of the corresponding services to that tenant will be stopped until you enable it again. If you want to completely delete a tenant and remove it from the list, you need to first disable it and then delete. It should be noted that this operation is irreversible. You can also enable, disable, and delete folders. However, please notice that if you delete a folder, all the tenants comprising that folder will be deleted permanently. You can move a customer or business partner and make them child items of another business partner. This feature might be especially useful now in the time of turbulent global economy when merging and acquisition of customers and business partners becomes a commonplace. You can also use the move feature to assign a customer or business partner to a specific folder. In order to move an entity, you will need to know the ID of the target entity. You can get this information easy by clicking on the three dot menu appearing next to the corresponding entity name and selecting show ID. Navigate to the section users. Here you can see all the admin accounts created for the current managed service provider. By default, a new user is always created for the selected entity. You can check which entity is currently selected by means of the breadcrumbs displayed on the top. In order to create a new user account for the selected entity, press the New button and select User. The process of creating a user is very intuitive. In turn, in order to delete a user, select it in the list of users, click on the three-dot menu next to its name, and select Disable, and then Delete.
navigate to the section reports and then usage. Here you can specify a type of report to be generated and submitted to the target audiences. For example, you can select the report presenting the current usage of cyber protection services. Navigate to section operations. Here you can see a number of interactive reports or dashboards presenting various aspects of service usage. For each report, you can perform a number of operations by clicking on the three dot pop-up menu next to the report's name. In order to create a new report, just press the Add Report button and select a suitable type of report. All the reports are highly customizable. For example, you can change the default name, tenant, and reporting period. Moreover, you can customize all the widgets comprising the report. Navigate to the section Audit Log. Here you can see the whole history of all operations related to the current business partner, such as sign-in of users and enabling and disabling specific services. Navigate to the section Settings and then Locations. Here you can manage all the cloud and local storages and assign them to specific cyber protection services. Navigate to the section Branding. Here you can customize the user interface or appearance of your service. In particular, you can change the service name, logo, color scheme with live preview, homepage URL, and other settings according to your corporate brand look and business needs. Moreover, you can use your corporate email server to conveniently receive all the service notifications. Along with partial rebranding, you can use the white labeling option to fully customize and make your service look exclusively for your customers. Finally, you can disable rebranding. In this case, all the branding settings and custom homepage URLs will be deleted. In order to restore the initial custom homepage URL, you need to submit the corresponding information to the support team. Navigate to the section API Clients. Here, you can create and manage the so-called API clients. API clients are used for accessing the account management and service APIs for integration purposes. Navigate to the section Security. Here you can enable the login control and specify the IP addresses from which members of this tenant can sign in to the web interface or access API. These settings are applicable only to the current tenant and do not apply to the child tenants. In addition, you can enable the two-factor authentication and support access. This is allowing administrators from parent tenants to manage this tenant. Navigate to the section Integration. Here you can see all the available integrations of Acronis CyberProtect Cloud with the most prominent professional service automation platforms and services available in the market, such as ConnectWise Manage, ConnectWise Automate, ConnectWise Control, Autotask Professional Services Automation, WHMCS, Plesk, and cPanel. Please watch our separate demo videos to get more information about each of those integrations.